Middle and junior high school students are often avid computer users who jump at the chance to get their hands on a keyboard, even if it's only at school. This eagerness can be a great tool for you to use to reach students in innovative and exciting ways. Some of the main types of technology you'll come into contact with at school are hardware, software, and the Internet. We're going to look at examples of each of these types of technology. Let's start with hardware, which can be anything from a basic four-function calculator to a digital projector. One of the more obvious examples of hardware is your classroom computer, but there are several other useful tools as well. One such example is the See and Solve Visual Calculator. It has an oversized LCD screen which shows the entire problem and lets the student enter information as if it were being written out. You might also use a video or DVD player along with a television or computer to show a recorded event such as a documentary about how scientists use calculations to estimate wind speed based on the types of damage caused by tornadoes and hurricanes. Throughout the unit, you could show additional recordings of weather broadcasts reporting on the destructive patterns created by these natural disasters. You can use a digital projector connected to a digital whiteboard to display line graphs on a coordinate plane and then discuss any upward or downward trends illustrated in the data. Using markers included with a digital whiteboard, you could adjust numerical units directly on the screen to emphasize how slight data changes can make a significant impact on results. Before we go any further, let's review what we've discussed so far about using hardware in the classroom. Answer this question and then click Next to learn about more ways in which you can use software in the classroom. Let's move on to software, which goes hand in hand with hardware. You'll find many uses for general office applications such as those in the Microsoft Office system. For instance, using the table feature in a word processor application, you could create a template for students to use for note taking. The table headings could include the date, page number, vocabulary words, equations, examples, and notes. How about using a presentation program to create a slideshow to review for an upcoming chapter test? Your slideshow might contain the steps used for prime factorization of a composite number, or you might illustrate the sequence of events needed to solve various word problems. Slides that show vocabulary flashcards could also be used during the review and then again as part of the test itself. You can use a spreadsheet application to graphically depict statistical data. For example, you could create a spreadsheet to compare the populations of the United States and Canada. You can use census information to compare the number of people, number of families, number of children, per capita income, and employment rates. You could transform this spreadsheet data into a bar graph to compare the quality of life in each country. How about using software that will jazz up otherwise boring worksheets and tests? Arithmafonts are a simpler way for you to type vertically stacked fractions, create clocks and coins, and design number lines. Clip Art for Math teachers can provide you with numerous illustrations that can be added to your worksheets, tests, and even transparencies. In order to reinforce basic math skills, you might allow students to play educational math software games such as Math Munchers Deluxe. For students who might prefer more challenging activities, Math Mystery Theater Set uses sound effects and funny plots to encourage learning and reinforcement of math concepts. Mental calculations and problem-solving techniques are just a few of the strategies required by Sheffrin's Pyramid. It's time to review again. Let's take a moment to think about how you can apply what you've learned so far. In the space provided, list some ideas for how you can use software for a specific unit you have coming up. When you're ready to move on, click Next. Finally, let's explore how you can use the Internet in your classroom. The possibilities are endless for you and your students. 
For instance, you can use a search engine to find websites for lesson plans online, while your students could use them to locate sites for researching projects. Ask.com offers a wealth of information about lesson plans involving particular topics. It even has a link called Ask for Kids, specifically created for children. Online discussion boards can be a great way to communicate with other teachers. You can share curriculum ideas and teaching strategies with educators around the world. Students can also use discussion boards to share their thoughts and gain other students' perspectives on challenging concepts such as slope or polynomials. Now think about how you could use a discussion board to communicate with other educators or students. In the space provided, list some examples of topics or questions you might have, using tab to move to a new line. When you're ready, click next to move on. There are also chat rooms available via websites like kidlink.org that allow your students to communicate with other students around the world or in their hometown. Students can use these online sites to get tutoring or homework assistance from their cyberspace peers. As you can see, the possibilities for integrating technology in your classroom are limitless, and we've only provided a few examples. Take some time to think about how they could be applied to lessons in your classroom to enhance your teaching and your students' learning. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in a classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid.